Looking forward to being back home and, and, and getting in front of our home fans. It's been, it's been a little bit and a little, little while since we've been back in front of our own crowd. And we're looking forward to this matchup coming up. Um, you know, the snow kind of reminds everyone in the times that we had just over the weekend of the, of the city of Buffalo, the spirit of Buffalo and the, and the surrounding area. And just uh, I want to give it some acknowledgement to all the all the um, all the people that, that that got out of their own homes to help others get get uh, get to safety and even in my neighborhood um, back there in Clarence and I had some great neighbors help me out and and uh, it's always a good reminder of just kind of what this city is made of and how we operate together and um, really thankful uh, for that reminder um, you know we're looking forward to this matchup against Kent State coming up and uh, we, we we know who they are and and how they operate very so much respect for their program with coach Sean Lewis I think you know he's done a phenomenal job just kind of building the program up getting the right players in place they play extremely hard they have a great scheme they have great skilled players quarterbacks done a really good job for them and they've played really strong up front not uh, really minimizing the amount of sacks that they've given up on the year and then Defensively, they took a, a big step forward. I felt like, um, you know, they hired a new defensive coordinator. I thought he, I think he's done a really good job of playing sound and and um, they're disciplined on all three levels. And I think they play really good for complementary football. And you know, we have so many implications going on really today, tonight's Tuesday with with the uh, with the with the matchup and what it may or may not mean to us. But you know, our our focus is really just staying locked in and doing the next right thing that we can control. Um, you know, if I told you at the beginning of the year that, you know, we'd be going into the last regular season game and uh, and we would be having our conversations about our path to get to Detroit, I would have told you that we had to do a lot of things right. And uh, there's a lot of people that uh, did a lot of things right in, in our building to put us in this position. Um, you know, when you're talking about playing in the postseason, you're talking about potentially playing against Toledo in Detroit. Um, obviously, that's not the first thing that's in front of us. But the reason why those conversations are being had right now is because of the work that's been done from January, February, March, from uh, from spring football all the way throughout the summer through training camp and the work that we've put in all year. And for us right now, it's about finishing strong. What we want to do is take care of what we can take care of and control our controllables. Uh, obviously, we'll be aware of the result of whatever happens tonight. But um, we know what 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 is at least relatively for sure, uh, pending any kind of any other weather is that we're playing Kent State Saturday at one o'clock and we got to get ready to go against those guys. No, no, we're not. We, uh, you know, we had our we had our uh, our Tuesday practice, and it's a game planning night for us. You know, so we're gonna we're gonna kind of stay in the normal sequence of how we do things. I'm sure everybody's TV TVs are gonna be kind of tuned in on on uh, you know kind of keeping regular updates on what's going on. But you know, tonight tonight is um, you know I'm meeting with the with the coordinators tonight as we normally do. We'll we'll have our staff meeting. We'll uh, we'll game plan and we'll get into some of the third down and red zone in two minute, and uh, you know we'll get pre prepared for uh, for our Wednesday practice. And, and we'll be aware. You know, obviously, we know the implications um, of of uh, the result of that game. Uh, they matter to us. But what really, what our, what our main focus is, and all, is on what we can control and, do, and doing the next right thing for ourselves. How do, you, how do you do that? How do you keep your team focused on Saturday as opposed to diverting their attention and keeping their eye on Tuesday night? How do you get them to focus on Just consistent messaging. I think the number one thing you can do as a leader of your bu building and, and organization is just to make sure that there's a very consistent message that our players hear. And I think the maturity of our guys allow them and the relationships that we have allow them to, to receive those messages the right way. But, uh, but, you know, our message in our building is beat Kent State. Let's be 1-0. and <clears throat> And then let's talk about what we have to do in order for those things to be true. You know, let's talk about our plan to win and, how, and our play style and what we have to do to accomplish the goal that we have. And, and it's really easy to stay focused on that because that's all we can control. And I think you're making a mistake when you when you start – you know, uh, getting yourself involved in things you really can't control. So we're laser focused on what's in front of us. We know, um, you know, uh, from a big picture standpoint, uh, this is, put, you know, potentially getting us to win number six, uh, which is, uh, you know, the first threshold of becoming bowl eligible, but also could mean that we're going to Detroit as well. Um, but at the end of the day, what it means for us and doing the next right thing in the overall development and growth of our program is just how we continue to prepare and perform in the month of November. And I think uh, that's the next right thing for us to do um, in addition to understanding that it means a lot of different things. 17 days without between games is abnormal, even longer than a normal bye week. Um, how do you handle that or what are the challenges? 
Well, we, this is we've played three home games in, in in three months, you know. So I'll, I'll see your 17 days. I'll raise you that. So we've been through our own adversity. We've been through our own hard. Our guys are very mature. They've handled it the right way. Uh, you know, I you know we kind of looked at it as 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 if we had almost like a bye week with the intensity of thinking that you have to prepare for someone because normally when you don't have that opponent at the end of the week, sometimes there's a there's a little lull in how you practice and prepare throughout a week. But you know, we were all the way up until the moment getting ourselves ready for Akron. Then the game got called off, but we. We still had quality work. We had really great practices. We got better last week. Uh, we just didn't have the uh, the actual game, uh, to, you know, to uh, to actually get played. So uh, I feel like our guys have handled it the right way. You know, I really do. I feel like they've just been mature and they've done a good job. And and um, you know, we just kind of continue to openly communicate and be transparent. Okay, what's the next right thing? And and we lay it all out. Here are all the situations. Here are all the implications. Okay, let's focus now. What's in front of us? What do we have to do? What's the next right thing we need to do? And uh, our guys have really been receiving those messages the right way and and uh, we we responded really well today with a great Tuesday practice for ourselves coming off back to back losses though you know is it harder to have that time off after back to back losses or again do you turn and say hey look you still got at least one more game which might possibly do yeah well you know we were supposed to be done when we were 0 and 3 Right, the season was over when we were over in three. You know, to wrap it all up. You know, th those guys aren't playing football anymore. We've responded all year. You know, and and you know, the, the you don't know anything about you know yourself and your team until you really go through something hard. And what's really been evident about our guys is that we know how to respond. Um, we know how to to uh, to push through situations and uh, take some lessons that we learned and put our next uh, right step forward. And got every uh, every confident confidence in this team that we'll respond in the, in the next thing that we have to do, which is getting ourselves prepared for Wednesday and ultimately getting ourselves prepared. Prepared, uh, for Kent State, regardless of whatever may or may not happen on Tuesday uh, tonight uh, for, uh, for tonight's game. How important is all the eligibility to you, not just to play in the bowl game, but have that extra month for the season? Yeah, I think. Um, in, in multiple facets, you kind of look at it, you know, number one, the development of your young guys, the development of your program, the more, you know, football is a developmental sport. The more you practice it, the better you can get at it. And bowl games provide you with extra practices and more times, uh, more, more uh, give, give, give the young guys an opportunity to work and, and uh, have some really focused time on how they develop and grow. And it kind of kicks you and transitions you into uh, to a spring football. And I think Really, from a uh, from a you know a goal setting standpoint, we talked about you know early on in this year, you know you can go all the way back. We wanted to be Mac East champs, we wanted to be Mac champs, and we wanted to become bowl champs. And uh, we'll see you know how the next two weeks kind of uh, play out in terms of if we can make those things true. Uh, but the next right thing for us to do is just continue to prepare. And uh, we know that this one this week can hit that threshold of getting us to number six, which is an important step for us. It's uh, it's not um, it's not the uh, you know it's the beginning. It's the threshold. It's where we want to continually be every single year. But the fact that we're having these conversations tells you that, um, you know, I, I, I just find it hard to say that, you know, guys have not done a really good job if we're having these kind of conversations in terms of playing in the postseason, in terms of potentially going to Detroit. Uh, we still have work to do, and our goals are in front of us, so we got to move forward. The 17-day layoff will be 17 on Saturday. Mm -hmm. How does that help with your team's rest and recovery? You know, you guys are some injuries. Yeah. I think it does if we handle it the right way, and I thought it gave us an opportunity to to do very what much of what you're saying, which is recover. You know, we we've we've played a lot of road games. We've been really all over the map. We we went down to South Carolina. You know, we've been in Michigan. We've been in Ohio. You know, we've played all over the uh, you know kind of the Midwest and, and even Southeast and. And um, we've played on the road. You know, just kind of how the schedule laid out. You know, there's no surprises here. We had a full expectation that, you know, after the number of uh, away games that we were going to have, that, you know, there's a little bit of a wear and tear just from travel, just from the operation of operating in your ho in a hotel, just from um, the, all the things that go along with you having to go on the road and win games. And we've done a great job. We were in Massachusetts. We had to go win on the road. We were at Bowling Green. We had to go win on the road. And um, the fact that we've had an opportunity now to uh, really come back home, get a chance to rest and recover, give the guys some space to recover, Cover and I think physically and mentally, uh, I think has uh, been a really good thing for us. We, you know, I think we're going to be very fresh and ready to go on Saturday, and we're looking forward to uh, the challenge in front of us. Different quarterback for Kent State than you played last year, but is the offense still the same tempo and yeah. play? And I think they lead the MAC in rushing. Or are they still doing a lot of the same offensive things that they did? I think the essence of who they are um, and and kind of how they operate on offense. You know, I was a GA at Baylor in 2007. 
Art Browse got to Baylor in 2008, and he brought this kind of system, not the same system, but a very similar system when uh, when, when Coach Browse and, and his crew kind of got in there. And I went on to Valdosta State. Um, and you see this kind of offense that, you know, RG3 kind of played in. And then, you know, uh, Dino Babers was the wide receiver coach at Baylor in 2008 when I was on the way out. And uh, they they all came up together in that system. And then Sean Lewis and Dino Babers got, got connected. And you see a lot of, uh, you know, the, uh, you know, the the extension of what they did you know 15 years ago and what it's become now but um, it's a it's a it's a very challenging scheme they, they you know they attack you down in the field they attack you horizontally and they you can see the stats statistics and you know they're rushing the ball very well I think they were one of the I think they were one or two in the league last year in rushing and and uh, it's a physical group so we got a lot of respect for them and uh, we know we're gonna have to be at our best and I got a lot of respect for coach Lewis and his staff and the job that they've done this year and they're still playing very hard they got a four and seven overall record is really deceiving they've played a lot of close ball games, one score games, and uh, we know we got to get ourselves ready to go. When you go from game planning to one opponent, and you present a game, and then your game plan to another opponent, is that, is that any challenge mentally? We, we were, imagine us, you know, kind of being, you know, in a, maybe in a, in a ship or something and just kind of spinning that wheel and turning the whole thing. I mean, we were ready to kind of turn the corner. We were ready. I mean, once it got postponed against Akron and we knew that potentially we were ready, we were ready, we were ready, let's, let's go play. And the minute the game got canceled, we moved on to Kent State immediately. We were there five minutes later watching Kent State film and we didn't want to kind of commingle anything in terms of like, okay, well, let's get ready for Kent State potentially. If Ak- No, we're going to be laser focused on Akron. Uh, the minute uh, we got off the phone with uh, me, and, me and Mark, Mark and I, Mark Onnett, our athletic director, the minute we talked and we knew the game was going to actually get canceled or postponed, uh, really is, is more fair to say, more accurate to say, uh, then we turned immediately our attention to um, to Kent State. I had a team meeting that morning. Uh, we talked to the team about what was going on. The coaches went right back and we spent the entire morning of Saturday, Saturday afternoon and Saturday evening watching film on Kent State. They're coming off of 10 days getting prepared for us. We knew we had to kind of hustle and get ourselves uh, kind of caught up uh, with them having an extra couple days for us. And uh, we feel like we've been in a pretty good, healthy space um, uh, with the time that we've had. What was your reaction and maybe the team if you told them when you recognize that this postponed game might give you a better opportunity to make that game? Yeah, I mean, it's just how you handle things, right? It's how you communicate and how we handle it. Um, we, we've really laid out, I think I really pride ourselves on just open and honest communication with our guys. Like, there's no... This is what it is, and, you know. So let's talk through all the situations, and um, met with some of the older guys, and and uh, so we can just make sure that we have consistent messaging through the building. Then we met with the team, and said, hey, here's the situation. You know, A could mean this, B can mean this, C can mean this. Okay, what's in our control? Okay, the very next right thing that we can do, which is you know preparing the right way, practicing the right way, doing the next thing in the moment. And um, and I think the way the guys responded was really healthy. We knew that uh, this was a potential possibility in terms of not playing this game and then this game happening on Tuesday night with Bowling Green in Ohio and what it can mean to us. All these surrounding circumstances. We have Thanksgiving coming up on Thursday. You know, it's another thing. We have parents coming in town. This is senior day. We've talked to our team about a lot of different things um, because they're all great things, but they're also, you know, uh, you know, the, the focus is being one to know. And how can we be one to know? Let's control our controllables, do the next right thing in the moment, stay laser focused on our process and our preparation, be us and be who we are. And, um, and that's what we feel like we've done. Right. Um, you know, it's a great mix of guys. We've had guys that have come. Uh, James Patterson, you know, he's been here for what it feels like nine years. You know, we've had some guys that have been here for nine months, you know, so we've had a mix of um, older guys that have really seen the development and the stages of the program take place and then the transition that's taken place. And then we have some guys that I felt like came in here and, I mean, just did a phenomenal job as an, as, as you would want an older guy to do, like a John and Muse and, and um, some of these guys, Joe, Robbie Mangus, Damian Jackson, uh, Ibrahim Conte, they're all seniors. And I think uh, as much as Saturday is about, you know, recognizing – you know, you kind of think of it in a more traditional sense of guys that have come up through your program for four or five years and recognizing those guys. It's really about a guy's journey. It's about a guy's story. And, um, and, and you know, a lot of guys have taken a couple of different twists and turns to get themselves here. And the thing we take so much pride in is they all consider themselves bulls. You know, you ask Robbie Mangus, he's like, hey, you know, I'm a bull. You know, he's a Dartmouth grad, but he's also a bull. He's a UB bull. And I think it's um, – we've, we, uh, we have a kind of unique uh, – uh, uh, 
you know, a development of our roster that way where we have multiple guys that came from multiple places. They put differences aside. They came together for all one goal, and the goals that we have that we want to accomplish are still in front of us. Oh, we were oh, we were in we were in that office. <laughs> we had we had work to do. I think I called. I think I got home in the evening. Um, I, I got the two little ones, Lance and Mara, at home, and we, we we bounced around the house a little bit, and uh, and then uh, that was in the evening. But we were we were getting ready for Kent State. We had we had a, we had a lot of work to do. Um, you've lived here before, so I think you've maybe seen. I've seen some things like this. Is this the biggest one you've been around? And what do you tell players from you know Southern climates where this is you know the first time they've seen it? Yeah, we were outside today, you know, just um, this is this is beautiful. We're, we're, we're living good. This is beautiful Buffalo weather. You know, we had sunshine and it was a little cool today, but we, we you know, we warmed up and, and guys were uh, having a good time. And I think last last week on the way into the indoor and some snow was falling, we had a little mini snowball fight that was going on. And so, I mean, guys, you know, players, they'll, they'll acclimate, you know, guys, 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 they know, they know, you know, what's the next right thing to do. And, and they've done a good job. We know whatever that weather's going to look like, I, I think it's calling for a pretty, pretty, pretty similar day that it was today. Um, but those guys will be ready to go. And um, at the end of the day, we know um, it, it's about, you know, on the field, the execution and what we have to do in those moments and how we have to be disciplined in those moments. And that's what's ultimately going to win the game. At one point when it looked like you might be playing in the middle of a snowstorm, is there a party of that would that thinks that's kind of cool or is it too aggravating as a coach? We were, we were, change uh, we were getting the guys ready to have the best, funnest snow game in the history of football. I mean, that was those, I mean, we were, by the time they, we got to the end of the week, those guys thought it was going to be, you know, a great time. You know, I mean, just guys, it's all about how you, how you look at things and how we, how we respond to things. But, um, you know, control our controllables, right? So the, the thing, thing about that score at the end of the game, it says, you know, it says a score, a dash, and a score. It doesn't ever tell you the weather. You know, so at the end of the day, we got to just make sure we, we do, do enough to uh, be on the right side of that, that scoreboard. Thanks, guys.